Now, first thing first, there is, guys, listen to this. There is nowhere anyone is going to have an infinite punishment for their finite sin. This is why there are so many atheists nowadays. People actually keep saying that kind of stuff. Nobody's going to be burning in hell forever. Nobody. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, What's your name? I'm Josh. Josh? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. Um, I have a question about um, hell. Um, yes. There's kind of like, I've read before from C.S. Lewis that like hell is locked from the inside. Almost saying yeah. like people kind of choose to be away from God. Right. But, you know, I read the Bible and I look at passages that seem like hell is more like direct punishment for people who do well, that. Well, it's punishment, them. but they still choose to be there. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, what is your view on that? And like, where is the boundaries of what's biblical there? If there is a God, there's only two possible destinations. You're either going to be with God, that's heaven, or you're going to be separated from God, that's hell. You say, well, what could be so bad about hell? What's, what's so bad about separation from God? Well, think about this. Everybody, whether they're a believer or not, experiences some of the common grace of God. In other words, everybody experiences love, relationships, a future, hope for a future. You experience all these things. You know, as rain falls on the just and the unjust. You don't have to be a Christian to experience this. That's common grace. But I want you to imagine a place where there is no love. There are no relationships. There is no hope. There is no future. There's just stone cold narcissistic self-absorption. That is Washington. <laughs> it's been that way for a long time. Good thing I'm not in Washington. Long time, ladies and gentlemen. No. That is hell. You're separated from the ultimate source of goodness by your own choice. So hell is locked from the inside. In fact, if you read uh, the uh, Jesus, uh, when he talks about Lazarus and the rich man, right? The rich man isn't saying, hey, get me out of here. I shouldn't be here. What does he say? Send Lazarus down to serve me so I can feel better, right? He is not saying I shouldn't be here. In fact, he says, go tell my brothers. And Jesus says, he has Moses and the prophets. If they don't believe them, they won't even believe if someone rises from the dead. So hell is just because why? God is just. So uh, let me pause right there for a second. So um, now I don't know where they get the idea that hell is separation from God. It could be true. I don't know. I don't know who C.S. Lewis is either. But Using the parable of the rich man and Lazarus as an example doesn't prove that hell is within. Now, it does mention that when he actually mentioned that um, Lazarus, um, the rich man said to Father Abraham, Father Abraham in the parable sent Lazarus to dip his finger into water and put it in my tongue to alleviate my pain. But Guess what? He forgot to mention. Where was the rich man? It wasn't like a hell that is within. From the parable, he was in fire. In the lake of fire. He was burning in fire. So now, this is not like a literal thing because it's a parable. But in a sense, it wasn't like a, a separation from God that was hell. He was in the actual hell, according to the parable. Well, this is right here. Luke chapter 16, verse number 22 to 24. The time came when the beggar, Lazarus, died and the angel carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades. Hades, meaning hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham from afar with Lazarus by his side. By his side. And of course, this is actually a parable. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. It wasn't something, it wasn't um, a, a within 
stop. It was actual fire. So people tell me that hell is locked inside. I don't believe that stuff. At least not in the Bible standpoint. Now, do people get to choose to stay away from God? Yes. Now, if it means that um, the consequences of hell is absence from God, that I can believe that. But I don't think it's actually an inward um, torment or however they call it that he's trying to portray. That is what I understand from the Bible. But hey, let's keep moving. That person you that story you referenced in the Bible, like you said it's locked from the inside. Would that mean it's biblical at all for someone to get out ever? If they're in hell, they don't want to get out. They don't want to be there, but they don't want to get out. They don't want the other alternative to be with God. No, because you see, people think, well, you know, how could you have infinite punishment for a finite sin? Well, it's against a finite being. But secondly, who says you stop sinning in hell? Right? You just keep your rebellion against God in hell. So we know this. Since God is just, nobody's going to be treated unfairly. And just as there are... There are grades of reward in heaven. There are also grades of punishment in hell, right? God isn't going to punish a garden variety unbeliever at the same level of punishment as, say, Hitler. That wouldn't be fair. Wow. So since God is just, though, people will be treated justly. All right. Thank you. Okay. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. And this is why I think we have so many atheists because of that. Um, man, how can I explain that to you guys? Okay, there, in what he just said, there was some truth to that. First thing first, here's the truth that he said. He said, when you are in hell, that doesn't mean you stop sinning. This is true. Um, because, and I'm going to read that. Oh, I should have brought it up already. I forgot to. The Bible talks about... When now, when God is pouring out the vials in chapter 16, Revelation talks about the seven vows of the wrath of God. I think. Let me let me do just let me do like a Google search on that because this is going to be interesting for you guys to understand. Um, when God is sending the the, the bowels, this is not hell. Um, okay, yeah, chapter 15 and chapter 16. Let me move to you quickly. Um, so, first angel poured the first bow and, and ugly festering sores, meaning plagues on their body, broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshiped its image. The second angel put out his bow to the sea and it turned like blood that of a dead person and every living thing in the sea died. Third angel poured out his bowels on the rivers and spring of water and became blood. Verse number 8. The fourth angel poured out his bowel on the sun and the sun was hot allowed to scorch people with fire. They were sealed by the intense heat and they cursed the name of God who had control over the plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. That is not hell. This is before Jesus Christ from the second time. That is not hell. Fifth angel put out his bow in, in, in put out his bow on the beast and then everything was darkness. Sixth angel put out his bow and the great river, river of Euphrates and his water dried up, and and the seven do, um, um, put out his bowel into the air. That's chapter sixteen of Revelation. Chapter sixteen of Revelation. So when he's talking about the people are cursing or hating God, that is not hell. That is before hell, because hell happens when Jerusalem comes. 
down with God to judge the wicked. That is when, after that, that when, that's when hell comes in. But there is something he failed to do. And I think that's why there is so many atheists. He failed to report because there is a lie that he said. And I'm, I'm not saying he's lying. He may have not known. But when he said, actually, you know what? Let me actually go back and, and, and show you guys again. Because I don't want to say it that one. Let's see, what is it? Block from the inside. Would that mean it's... All right. No, because okay. you see, people think, well, you know, how could you have infinite punishment for a finite sin? Well, it's against a finite being. But secondly, who says you stop sinning in hell? Okay. I just showed you guys. You are not, you don't, when you are, when I just read those chapters, that's not hell. That's before hell. Now, who says that you get, and who say, huh, how does he say that? I, I want to make sure I get it right. I believe if someone rises from the dead. So hell is just because Hold on. locked from the inside. Would that mean it's biblical at all for someone to get out ever? If they're in hell, they don't want to get out. They don't want to be there, but they don't want to get out. They don't want infinite punishment for a finite sin. Oops. No. Because, you see, people think, well, you know, how could you have infinite punishment for a finite sin? Okay. How could you have un un infinite punishment for finite sin? Um, and then he said, then he said, Well, it's against a finite being, but secondly, who says you stop sinning in hell? It's against the... Now, first thing first, there is... Guys, listen to this. There is nowhere anyone is going to have an infinite punishment for their finite sin. This is why there are so many atheists nowadays. People actually keep saying that kind of stuff. Nobody's going to be burning in hell forever. Nobody. You're going to be burning in hell like I just read in the in the Bible, um, but actually, let me actually read that part for you, where it talks about burning in hell. Chapter 14 of Revelation, verse number 9 through verse number 11. Then a third angel of heaven saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast in his image and receive the mark on his forehead or on his hand, he shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the God, which is poured out without full, which is poured out full strength into the cup of it, or into the cup of his indignation, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torments ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast or his image, and with the mark of his face of his name. People use that and say, you see. We're going to be burning in hell forever. That's not true. Do you remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? That they were destroyed with what? Fire and brimstone? The Bible calls that eternal fire. Are they still burning today? No. Is the smoke still there? No. Basically, that's why God said it the most better. In Malachi chapter 4, verse number, oh, read the whole chapter. Malachi chapter 4 talks about God's judgment day. Listen to this. Verse number 3, I would say. But read the whole chapter. Verse number 3 says, You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be as ashes. Question mark. Let me start from verse number one. Verse number one. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. Burning like an oven. Which means it's going to be fire. And all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will, will stumble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up. Says God. That will leave neither wood 
no branch, but to you who fear my name, and then he keeps on going. In verse number three, he says, You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet on the day I do this, says the Lord of hosts. What does that mean? What is that day coming like a burning like an oven where God will burn everybody or the wicked? It is when when people are thrown into the fire, um, hell fire. They become become ashes. When something becomes ash, is it still burning, or does it stop burning? It stop burning. So no one, please, no one's going to be burning in hell forever. You cannot be burned in hell for a period of time. You die become ash. Now, when the Bible says that the smoke of their torment arrives forever and ever, it doesn't mean that it's going to be forever and ever you're going to be seeing smoke. No. It basically means the consequences of that burning is forever. Make sense? Alright, guys. So, um, if you guys want me to go deeper into that, let me know in the comment section and then I can make a video just on that part only. But that was just my reaction. So, again, I hope to see you again very soon.